And thank you, Bree, for taking over my opening duties this morning. I appreciate it. I just got to sit here and enjoy the show. <laughs> I want to welcome to the program Village Management Services CEO, Siobhan Foster. Thanks for joining us, as always, with your monthly update. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the thing that you, I know you're an adamant watcher of our television show, so you saw me do the preview of the opening of the uh, clubhouse the other day. I was in I the pool, I was in the club, and it looks fantastic. It looks great. And things are on schedule, I understand. It is, and I just wanted to go over the timeline with you this yeah, morning. Yeah, that'd be great. So, again, the project remains on budget and on schedule, and our tentative timeline is a uh, September 3rd recreation will begin moving in, and that takes some time to get every... Buddy right, back everything in. had to move, get moved out, so now you got to move everything, plug everything in, set everything where it has to go. Right, and so we're shooting for a September 16th soft reopening, and this will give us a chance to troubleshoot and take care of anything mm -hmm. that we may have missed. Uh, the pool may reopen sooner. It's been replastered, and we're just waiting for county approval. Mm -hmm. And then the grand reopening event will be in October at a date to be determined. Okay. And wow. so, again, you can watch the August 10th this day to see the preview that Michael was just alluding to. <laughs> That's right. August 10th, we did a real fun preview. It was really great to walk around. The pool was not finished on plastering, so that's great. And they also did repiping in that, so the, 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 the filtration is going to be a lot better, too, which that's I understand. True. So lots of great improvements there, and, and it looks fantastic. So, folks, if you want to see that segment, go ahead and take a look at that one. But it's, uh, it really looks amazing. And I know we had some pictures of the uh, remodel up there. Yeah, as well, we just so. wanted to share the pictures. We have the lounge that now has more efficient LED lighting, new doors, paint, new flooring, mm -hmm. and so forth. The ballroom. I love those chandeliers, by the way. Those chandeliers are really cool. They put in the main ballroom. Yes, the new chandeliers. They're, again, energy efficient. Mm -hmm. And then the locker rooms have been redone. This is a great uh, upgrade from what we had. New LED lighting, new fixtures, tile work, and so forth. And in the middle of the uh, screen is the new fireplace. Mm -hmm. And we saw this, I saw some of the slate that they're putting on around that, and looks, it, that's gorgeous too. So really, it's, a, it's such a great update in the whole place, and it looks, looks amazing from what I saw. But like you said, there's always a little, come, little tweaks here and there, so it's gonna, that soft opening that you're shooting for, there's, there's gonna be little things, the little fixes, because it's such a massive project, right? Right, exactly. Now, we also have lots of celebrations going on. <laughs> 60 years, we had a little preview from Brie earlier, but now 60 year celebration, take us through that. Sure, so again, it's gonna be low key, but we wanna celebrate the 60th anniversary, and that'll take place on Monday, September 9th, from 5 to 7.30 p.m. at Clubhouse 2, front and back patios, the ballroom, the lawn. There'll be music from the Woods Combo, giveaways, food options, Clubhouse displays. Um, listed on the screen are many of the special guests, the Laguna Woods History Center, Foundation of Laguna Woods, right. Village Community Fund, Thrive, GRF United, and Third Mutual Boards, as well as Mutual 50 board. Um, Pretty much everybody with a relationship with the village over the years is going to be there, right? Right, right. And then the Moulton Museum will be there as well. Mm -hmm. so. That's terrific. And that disaster preparedness, they're coming with an earthquake machine where you get to go in there and sample what a, what a 3.2 feels like, that kind of thing I heard. So uh, I don't know if I want to get knocked around like that, but it sounds fun for somebody, not me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then and as pre even more. Yeah, as pre mentioned, there'll be food available, a GRF no host bar, Memorial Care will join with uh, various items as well as um, a health insurance and Medicare expert to answer questions. Seating is limited, lawn chairs are welcome, so come on out. That doesn't sound that low key. Sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, we got some other updates for these uh, that's going on and wanna talk about uh, what we have to save the dates for DPTF. Yes, the Disaster Preparedness Task Force has two events coming up. One is on Tuesday, October 8th. Residents are encouraged to participate in the Security Services and Task Force Expo. Mm -hmm. This will take place in Clubhouse 5. There'll be vendors, experience an earthquake simulator, as you right. mentioned, find disaster preparedness supplies, and discover additional resources. Mm -hmm. And then on Thursday, October 17th, is the statewide Great Shakeout Earthquake Drill. And this takes place at 1017. And we encourage residents to prepare for a disaster by identifying drop cover and hold locations, inventorying personal emergency supplies, updating emergency contact information with friends and family. And mm -hmm. there's a website that you can visit, shakeout 
dot org slash California for more information. And that's one of those things that a lot of people we think about, but we don't always are always prepared for. And they, I know that it's like, hey, on a major earthquake, shelter in place for two days before you can expect services. So it's one of those things that people really should be aware of and what they need around the house. So exactly. that's an important one. Exactly. And we've had some small earthquakes recently. So yeah, that's always, it's a, always a reminder, reminder when yes. the place starts shaking. I, where's my water at? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, gate entry, you guys are doing a, have a great system to simplify in and out, right? Yes, we're just reminding residents that RFIDs are available. With the RFID decal, you can pull up within two feet of any resident lane gate arm to trigger the lift. RF decals are available from resident services and cost $25 per vehicle and are mm -hmm. valid as long as the vehicle is owned. Um, and again, you know that your contact is resident services. Mm -hmm. You can make an appointment or come in with your valid re registration and get your RFD. Yeah, take those little extra steps, make your life easier on the in and out of the gates. That's a great one. Yes. Kudos cards. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Kudos cards <laughs> are a great way for residents to acknowledge VMS staff who've provided excellent customer service, who have gone above and beyond their regular duties. Um, Kudos cards are available at Clubhouse offices, the Community Center Concierge Desk, and you can return them to the same locations. Mm -hmm. Or you can do them electronically by emailing info at vmsinc.org. And these kudos cards are shared with the employees, as well as put in the employee newsletter for all of our employees to see and and yeah. celebrate. And that's really a great way to do that. My sister works for American Airlines and they have a kind of a same system where if she, somebody gets great service, they'll put a note in and she gets so excited, oh, somebody put a note in on what I did for them on the airplane. So it really does make a difference. I know it takes a second to do that, but the employees really do get a lot out of that. Like, wow, they, somebody appreciates me. That's definitely true. Yeah, for sure. It's really great. I'm glad you guys are doing that. Um, ITAC ERP update. That's a lot of acronyms going on there. <laughs> so, so the Enterprise Resource Planning System is our new automation system, and phase one is on schedule for September uh, completion. And this includes integration of the core modules such as financial and inventory management. And we're undergoing comprehensive user training to ensure a smooth transition. And currently staff is in the midst of a practice go live that tests mm -hmm. all the system functionality and again we hope to be live September 1st. September 1st that's the date and it's looking like it's going that direction yes. pretty much? Yes. Fantastic. And then Good there are two know. more phases, phases mm -hmm. two and three and that's what the ITAC committee is focusing on now, prioritizing those functionalities and figuring out how best to um, fund the the rest of the project. A lot of work behind the scenes going on there. Um, we, have a zo we have a zoning hearing that people are interested in talking. We'll talk about that, what's going on with the city and zoning. Sure, the city is updating its general plan and its zoning code. This mm -hmm. follows the update of its housing element. And so there'll be a public hearing on Wednesday, August 21st at 2 p.m. in the city council chambers mm -hmm. on the general plan and zoning code hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and this only involves one corporation-owned property, and that's GRF Garden Center One mm -hmm. on Moulton Parkway. And in 2003, this had been assigned a land use de designation um, of housing to meet the city's then obligations under state law. Mm -hmm. Now that the new general plan element has been done, um, the city is no longer relying on that designation, so it can be rezoned to open space open space recreation to mm -hmm. match what the other garden center here is zoned mm -hmm. for. So that's the only property involved. Um, so a little peace of mind in knowing that that's not going to be housing anymore, even though the city really, really wasn't acting on that, right? Correct. Okay, Correct. well, great. All right, well, this, t this time next month, we'll have a party under our belt, I think. That's so true. it'll be great. We'll have a little update on that. Thank you so much, Yvonne Foster, CEO for Village Management Services, for coming and giving us this update today. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. When we come up, we'll be hearing from folks from the History Center, all sorts of celebrations coming. Stay tuned.